Hello, beautiful people of YouTube, and welcome back to my channel, The Ninth Element. I'm Mindy. If you don't know, and if you're new here, welcome. And if you're returning, thank you so much for coming back. Well, it's now fall, and it's storm season. And so a couple things are, yay, I get to wear scarves again for winter and fall, but we are also going to be facing probably power outages and many storms. Today, we're gonna to be talking about emergency cooking. What do you do if the grid goes down or if there's a storm and your power goes out and you have all your fancy emergency prepared food? How are you going to cook it? What if you don't have your gas stove? What if you don't own a camping stove? I'm going to be talking about common things you can use around your house to create ambient heat as well as a way to cook your food. So stay tuned today and enjoy this. very simple emergency preparedness meals that all just take hot water. Speaking of which, I've had this kettle on here for a few minutes. I am using one of these TerraFlame liquid alcohol burners that you can see down inside. This is what they call a TerraFlame indoor fire pit. We're going to talk about this today as well, but I'm just going to make a cup of tea here. And then we will start our chat about how you can make emergency prepared food. Look at that, boiling water. All right, let's go and do this.
you may remember me from the emergency heat and light, the 72-day candle made out of Crisco lard. That's this candle right here. Now, I was thinking about doing some cooking with this one, but I don't think it's going to be very effective, especially as the temperatures would be lower in a power outage situation in your home. So I want to give you ideas of things that are going to make you successful at creating your emergency food if there is a power outage. You can see how I made this candle for ambient light and heat and I will pin it in the link above and I will put it in the description below. Look through my channel for the emergency heat and light, the 72 day candle, the Crisco lard candle. This particular one here is a half pound candle. It will burn for 36 days at eight hours each day. And don't forget after you blow your wick out to trim it because that will make it burn longer and hotter. So let's talk about cooking now. Before you attempt to cook with any kind of liquid alcohol, gel fuel, butane, propane, please have a carbon monoxide poisoning detector. You don't want to kill yourself. I personally have not met anybody that has ever done it to themselves. Houses are pretty ventilated. If you're feeling very paranoid about it, crack a window, but that is something to be aware of. Now I've uh, been warming up this kettle on the Terra Flame fire pit. I'll put a link in the comments below um, to this fire pit. You can order them on Amazon. You can actually make marshmallows on it. I've placed a grate that I have from a three quart uh, Instapot over this flame and that seems to work really well to hold the kettle and to allow it to be able to boil there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make our spaghetti noodles. Now I'm using just regular um, ramen noodles because they cook fast and they've actually got great flavor. So all we need to do with these ones is put them in a pot, save the spice packet for another recipe, pour your boiling water over your noodles to cover, and put a lid on it. The reason I chose ramen noodles is because they cook really fast and easy in just really hot water. So I'm going to just be breaking them apart here and letting them finish doing their cooking in this pot. There's no extra heat needed for these ones. Let me just cover them back up. Here's where the real cooking comes in. So I am going to place my pot over the terra flame and into it I'm going to put my spaghetti sauce. Now this is just a plain old tomato sauce. If you have vegetables uh, in your fridge that need to be used up, this would be a great time since your power is out. Um, meats, I'm not cooking with any raw meat because I don't have anything out of these appliances that would be hot enough and I think it would take forever to cook it. So the meals that I'm doing, if they have meat in them, the meat's already cooked, but they're mostly vegetarian. I'm going to start my timer on my phone and place it here. I'm going to place the lid on this pot and we'll just see how long the two of these take until they're ready from using the TerraFlame. It has been over eight minutes since I've started cooking and the noodles, they're looking done. I don't know if you can see them but I'm going to leave them in the water since I'm not boiling it. So to make sure that they're to the tooth, al dente, you know, like a spaghetti noodle should be. And let's check the sauce. It's not bubbling yet. Oh, but there's a bit of steam. Mm. It's warm. Well, it's been 17 minutes, so, oh yeah, that's nice and steamy. 
Let's see if that's... Mm. Yep, that's plenty good. Let's shut the stopwatch off. I'm going to go and drain the pasta and I'm going to serve this up. So the noodles are still hot and I'm going to put them back in the pot. Well, YouTube, that was such a success. I made this spaghetti dinner from the Terraflame fire pit. Let me just see how it tastes. Yeah, it reminds me of um, not quite canned spaghetti. But the ramen noodles are a perfect noodle for spaghetti or for any kind of other quick pastas. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and the peppers are a kick. Mm -hmm. Cheers. The next cooker that I'm going to use and cook with is the cutlery stove. Say what? Yeah. So, taking the cutlery out of here. For this one, I am going to use the TerraFlame, otherwise known as gel fuel, because it is quite of a deep chamber in there, and I think the sterno would only go to there, which would leave a lot of space for the pot. This is taller, so I'm going to place this in here and the pot over top. And I'm going to make a breakfast snack now too. Let's see how this works. And so with the uh, already pre-boiled water for the oats, that helps get them started. And then just back onto the terra flame to cook them. I don't think that this is gonna take very long at all. Oh, I love walnuts and figs in my oatmeal. Okay, so we'll let that cook. And we'll see how long it takes. I'll start the timer on the clock. We're still going strong. Timer's at 4 minutes and 32 seconds. Let's put the fire out to preserve the flame and take a look at this just like oatmeal should be. Okay, I will serve this up and we'll taste test it and see how it tastes. My goodness, can you believe that I cooked oatmeal on my cutlery holder? Let's see how it tastes. Give it a bit of a mix. Get some fig and walnut in there. Mmm, that is so good. You know, you almost don't need the brown sugar with the figs. Mmm, mm-hmm. Cooked perfectly. Okay, 
Well, that concludes the second cooker. Let's try the third one. Will it grill cheese? This last oven is like a rocket stove. One of my subscribers sent it to me and normally you would put the fire in here um, and then you would have it outside. It would, you know, have the fire and then you put your things on top to cook. I've actually set the um, Terra Flame on top of one of my uh, Corningware containers and that's what you see down below. I've got my button. So my camera paused there for a second. So I've got the timer going and I've got the butter melting in the pan. It's melting pretty good. As soon as it's sizzling, I will add the grilled cheese. Okay, the butter's sizzling, so this is the best way to make grilled cheese. You butter one side of the bread with your melted butter. Oop, and don't let your cheese fall out. Ah, put your cheese back in. And then you flip it over and you rub the butter in on the second side. I'm gonna put it in the middle and it's gonna get nice and cheesy. It's been, let's see, uh, just over five minutes. Let's have a look and flip this over. Oh, it's getting a little bit brown. It's getting a little brown. The butter is sizzling in the pan. Fuel is still going, so I mean, it, it's working. I think we're gonna have a grilled cheese. Campfire grilled cheese. All right, it's been seven minutes. Let's see how this is doing. It's crispy on the top from the last side. Ooh, look, at, can you see that? It's toasted, just like you would on a regular stove. I think this is gonna be successful. Yep, yeah, and the cheese is even melting. It's looking fabulous. I can't wait to dig into this one. Now been nine minutes. And let's take a look. Oh, that's perfect. Do you see that? It's perfect grilled cheese. So let's get this cut up and take a taste. Okay, so let's cut into this and see how it is. Oh, oh, oh it's perfect. Do you see that? Oh, grilled cheese. Mm. Mm. Tastes like a grilled cheese to me. Just, it just needs some ketchup. I'm Canadian. That's the Canadian condiment. Mm, mm, mm. Rocket stove is a success.